Welcome back to another Sophisticated Saturday. Today we're starting off with writing out my to-do list on my sophisticated dry erase board. If you are interested in this dry erase board, it's actually available on my website for purchase. But I like it because I don't have to waste a bunch of paper and can write out everything that I need to get done in the day and either mark it off or erase it as we go through. I wanted to get in a little bit of the holiday spirit with you guys because like I've shared on my channel before, I am Jewish and Hanukkah begins sundown tomorrow night. So it starts sundown on Sunday and then we will have eight nights of Hanukkah to celebrate. So I thought it'd be fun to share a couple of like Hanukkah themed or holiday recipes with you guys while doing a little bit of cleaning and everything else that I like to do on my normal sophisticated Saturdays. So I'm going to start off by getting a load of our sheets in the washing machine. I really like to multitask as much as possible. So I'm getting those sheets put in the wash. There were also a couple of things that were left out on the countertops of the laundry room. So I cleaned that up before heading downstairs because I wanted to start with the sugar cookies. And so these sugar cookies aren't necessarily Hanukkah themed. I realized I don't have as many cookie cutters as I thought I did. So I would like to grow my cookie cutter collection a little bit more. I didn't have any Hanukkah themed ones. I do actually have some Christmas ones and I had some snowflakes. So I am going to make snowflake sugar cookies today. And if you are thinking about making sugar cookies, it's one of the most versatile recipes, obviously, and you can make them any season in any shape. So don't feel like you have to only make these cookies if you are celebrating Hanukkah. You can make them into little Christmas trees if you want. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to frost the snowflakes, but you can add in other colors and do whatever you want. Why is it so hard to speak the truth? I'm trying a new sugar cookie recipe today and I wanted to find one that's kind of a no spread sugar cookie recipe. A lot of times I have issues with recipes where you use cutouts and then the cookie spreads a lot. It definitely helps if you chill them as well to prevent them from spreading, but I wanted to make sure I was finding a good recipe for cutout sugar cookies. So I will link the one that I used in the description box below. I did make a couple of tweaks to it because I really like almond extract in my sugar cookies. That's what makes me think of a sugar cookie. So I added some of that in as well and didn't decrease the amount of vanilla extract. I just wanted even more flavor in my cookies and actually even added in some almond extract into my royal icing frosting that I made as well. So in a second here, you'll see Jim walk straight behind me and then we kind of burst into laughter. I warned Jim that I was filming and if he didn't want to be on camera, then he shouldn't walk behind me. And then he looked up and realized that the camera was right there while he was talking to one of his friends on the phone. So he just backed away and I had a pretty good giggle about that. You guys will see Jim in my videos from time to time and feel like he's been in a lot more videos recently with me being pregnant and needing help but I always want to warn him when I'm filming so he doesn't walk in front of the camera if he doesn't want to be on camera So fly, you got me like If you're somebody who bakes a lot, this rolling pin is one of my favorites. You'll see that I was able to adjust it so I can roll it out to the exact thickness that I want for the cookies. I did a quarter inch for sugar cookies. I Googled it. My recipe didn't actually tell you how to roll out the sugar cookies, so I rolled it to a quarter inch, which was the first result on Google as to what thickness they should be for a standard sugar cookie. 
but you can change it by taking off those little spheres at the end of the rolling pin and adjust the size based on what you're baking. And it makes it really easy with whatever a recipe says. And you don't have to put things on either side of your dough and roll on top of that. It's just all contained within the rolling pin. Like I said, chilling sugar cookie dough really does help a lot with the retention of the shape. So I put the rest of the dough into the refrigerator while I made the first batch. I figured I had quite a few I was gonna be making. So the first few I could kind of do as a test and see what difference it made. And the chilling actually did not make as big of a difference as I thought it would, but the later batches did spread just a tad bit less. It's all different, you got every little string on me. The way you make me feel is crazy. How did you get so fly? You got me like... While all of the cookies were chilling, I started on the royal icing. This is not a royal icing recipe that I would recommend. It was pretty thick. I've made royal icing before and been able to decorate cookies a lot easier. I could have probably added in some liquid to thin it out a little bit, but didn't really realize how thick it was gonna be until I started actually icing the cookies and it was a little more difficult than I expected. I didn't have a super solid game plan when it came to these cookies and how I wanted to decorate them. I just knew I wanted blues and whites and to make it winter and Hanukkah themed. So I pulled out my food coloring. And if you are not using gel food coloring when you bake and bake things that you want to be really nice and vibrantly colored, it's a game changer. I don't know how I haven't been using these all the time. I grew up using just the regular liquid food coloring, but these are so much better. You need the tiniest little drop and the colors are so vivid. And especially if you're gonna put it into a cake, these colors really pop. So I did a darker blue, a lighter blue, and then was gonna do some white as well. You can easily put these into piping bags with a really fine piping tip, or you could use little Ziploc bags like I did here. I mostly just didn't wanna go through the hassle of getting out the piping tips and stuff, so just kind of was lazy and put them into these little Ziploc bags, and then when I was ready, just snipped the smallest edge off of the corner. One of the things that I am actually kind of sad about not being in the office this year for work is that we used to do an annual cookie exchange. And because I love baking so much, this was really fun for me to bring in a few different types of cookies and share with my coworkers my love of baking. So I feel like this year I'm missing having a real purpose to baking. And I'll also say we just moved to Nebraska just over two months ago. I still don't know a lot of people here. We're not seeing a lot of people with me being this far along in pregnancy and just not really wanting to leave the house. So even when I have the desire to bake and have that baking bug, there's not a ton of people to share these goodies with. So I do miss work for that reason and miss Denver for that reason too. But it's still fun to make these for us. And if anybody does stop by, then we have cookies. We actually just got invited to 
a couple of different things in our neighborhood as the holidays are coming up. We have a neighbor who's having a little wine party so we're gonna pop over there i think for a little bit and another neighbor who actually is having live reindeer over at his house mostly for kids but i think we may swing by so there are some events that we could end up sharing some of these baked goods at i looked up some images on google just to get a little bit of inspiration on how i wanted to decorate these and then just kind of freehanded them rotated through the different colors and drew a bunch of different snowflake shapes just as snowflakes are each cookie was unique and an individual art design maybe if i change the way i love it So I'm going to put some of that stuff away and then head back upstairs because the laundry is done and I'm going to put the sheets on the bed. I did enlist Jim's help with this one so he can help me make the bed. I will say our king mattress is so heavy. It's really hard for me to pick up those corners and I think our bed frame makes it even more difficult, but picking up those corners to get the fitted sheet on it feels like it's near impossible for me. So I did the best that I could on my side. And then Jim came around to help me and lift it up a little bit more since I let him know that I couldn't quite get it all the way under. And this sophisticated Saturday I filmed later in the day, so we decided not to completely make the bed at this point and that it was good enough to just put the duvet cover back on top of the bed and just the pillows that we sleep with, all the decorative pillows we left right on the floor or we've actually been putting them in our baby's bassinet since our baby is not here yet and it is a nice open spot to put all of our throw pillows. Back downstairs, I'm going to do a little more cooking and make some latkes. So I actually really should have texted my mom or called my mom before I started making this recipe because I would have changed it up a little bit. I asked her what she does in her latkes and she actually said that she puts a Granny Smith apple in them. And I think that would have been really good. So I'll share again the recipe that I used, but I would definitely consider using a Granny Smith apple because I think that would have kind of elevated the flavors a little bit. But I'm basically just sticking in two whole potatoes. I slice them up first and put them in my food processor and one onion and blended that all up and then put that in a dish towel and wrung that over the sink to get all of the excess liquid out and then put it in my mixing bowl and added in all of the other ingredients. If you're not Jewish and you're not familiar with latkes, they're like a little potato pancake. They're typically fried in oil over a stovetop, so that's what I'm doing today. Maybe not the healthiest dish, but they are traditional for Hanukkah, and since we're getting in the Hanukkah spirit today, I thought it would be a fun one to make and share with you guys and celebrate a little bit early since I filmed this right before Hanukkah. Once that oil was nice and hot, I put a little piece of potato in there just to make sure it sizzled up and I could tell that the oil was ready to go. And then I used my larger cookie scoop and put little scoops of the potato and onion mixture 
into the oil, flattened it down with my spatula a little bit, and then you just cook them till they're nice and browned. You want them actually pretty browned, and then you can flip them over. Don't worry about the shape being a perfect circle or anything. They're typically not a perfect circle, so it's fine if it looks like a freeform shape. I just kept repeating this process over and over again until they were done. Of course, I put them on a paper towel just to kind of absorb some of that extra oil and was sprinkling them with some coarse sea salt right after they came out of the oil so it would stick onto the top of the latkes. Everyone has different preferences when it comes to how they like to eat their latkes and what they like them with. A lot of people like either applesauce or sour cream or a combination. A lot of times when I'm cooking in general, I replace sour cream with Greek yogurt. First of all, it's a little bit healthier. And second of all, I just always have Greek yogurt on hand because it's so versatile and there's so many different things you can do with it. So I used Greek yogurt instead of sour cream and it tasted great and also made a little dish of applesauce. And my favorite is a combo of the applesauce and sour cream. And if you've never had this before and you think it sounds weird, I'm telling you, give it a try, celebrate another culture and get in the Hanukkah spirit with me. So here's what our little display of all of the fun goodies that I cooked and baked today look like. And I have it set up next to the menorah, which we get to light tomorrow night. Jim and I sat down and had dinner after that. And so now that we're done with dinner, you can see it's much darker outside. And I wanted to get the dishwasher put away because the dishwasher was clean. It finished up while we were having dinner. And then I could load up all of the dishes from the baking that I had done and all of the latkes and things like that. I still have this strong urge to keep cooking and baking even while I'm this pregnant, but I will say it's starting to slow down a little bit or I wanna sit down while I'm cooking and baking. So I think I have probably another week or so in me of really cooking and baking the same way that I usually do. But after that, I'm having a feeling that things might start slowing down just a little bit and the recipes that I'm making might get a little bit more simple as opposed to some of the more elaborate meals that I make every now and then. Of course, after the baby, there's gonna be even less cooking, I'm sure, just because there's gonna be a lot going on, but good thing I've prepped a bunch of freezer meals. Hopefully we can do a little bit of eating out, having some food delivered, that type of stuff. So just reducing the amount that I'm cooking in general. But for now, I'm enjoying still cooking the same way that I usually do.
Last but not least tonight, I'm going to use my Bissell and do a vacuum and mop all in one. I've shared this before, but this tool is still something that I'm really enjoying. I love how if there are a few crumbs, I don't have to first do a pass with the broom or first do a pass with the vacuum. I can just do this all in one and mop and vacuum at the same time. If there's a bunch of crumbs and debris and stuff on the kitchen floor, I will take out the vacuum or take out the broom and get that stuff up first. But if it's just a little bit, I really don't mind. And it is meant to do both a vacuuming and a mopping at the same time. So it's what it's meant for. I just don't love when there's a ton of gross stuff that it's picked up in the dirty water section of the machine. I'm actually still using the trial liquid that came with it. So I do need to order some more of it. They have different multi-surface cleaners. If you don't have one of these machines, not only do they do hard surfaces and hard wood, but you can use them on area rugs. So if you have little area rugs, this is also something that you can put on the area rug. It looks like I'm cleaning at midnight, but since daylight savings time, of course it's getting much darker earlier. So it really wasn't that late at night, but it did look pitch black outside. So this was the last thing on my to-do list and basically all I could handle before I wanted to sit back down and take a break for the rest of the night. I didn't do the entire first floor. I just kind of did the main areas where we walk through a whole bunch, our kitchen and that main living space. And then I also wanted to give our mudroom a quick clean that we're walking through with shoes quite often. So that area is a little bit dirtier than the rest of the house since we take off our shoes when we get in the house. But in the mudroom area, I feel like we wear our shoes a lot and are running back and forth. So I wanted to give that a quick clean as well. And then I'm going to show you what the dirty water looks like and check this last thing off of my to-do list. So if you enjoyed today's video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I will see you guys later.